Hello, good morning, and welcome back to another edition of the Good, the Bad, the Ugly, the Juicy Juicy Butch Boy. There's a part of Inhaled Vapors. Now, this will be a bit of a two parter today. I'm going to start off with just a few thoughts I had from Vape Jam from the weekend, and then I'll go on to the flavour review. Um, the review that will be in the second part will be from Super Good. That will also be part one of a two part review. And um, they very kindly at Vape Jam gave me their whole range to review. Um, so I'll be looking at the Pear Fizz. And the blue pom mojito. But anyway, starting off, um, jam at the weekend. <sighs> wow, wow, that that, that kind of sucked ass. Um, I think in total there was probably about ninety booths there. Um, there's a small stage area, um, small little area where they could hold their talks. I mean, for the Saturday, I went down there. They had Ruby Roo. They had Twisted Messers was doing the rounds. Wesmec, uh, Jabo was there, and but no one was going to these talky talk events. So it's just like there was like 20, 25 people sitting down listening to these people speak, and it was just kind of like oh, atmosphere was lacking. Um, once again, I know I'm forty five, and I may come across like an old fart now, but um, it's just too fucking loud in some areas in that place. You generally can't even hear yourself. Talking to the person next to you, like, ah, 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 ah. then you're gonna get cut in the moves, then realize you're absolutely blasting that person out. Content, content was the main problem with this. It's, it's sad to see this event going down the toilet every time. No, I mean it's a free event practically. I mean unless you bought tickets on the day, in the run up to it, it was a free event for the Saturday anyway. It was a free event, and and you still couldn't fill the place. Come on. Um, other problem I had with was pricing. Pricing some of the booths there. I think just because they had that one day for B2C. So they, they, you didn't really get that chance to drop the prices. Some of the pricing in that was horrendous. I mean, some of it, was, it, it was shop prices instead of like a expo event prices. And I am looking at you, Six Licks. Six Licks, you were fucking out of order, mate. 25 quid at an event for a 120 mil short fill. I don't know if that even included the nick shots, to be honest. A hundred and twenty, well, basically a hundred mil short fill, where you add your own two nick shots to, for 25 quid. Your stuff was all right. Your stuff was good, to be honest, but not that good. Come on, guys, you're at an event. And it was like, oh, yeah, but if you buy two, you get them for 30. I didn't want to. <laughs> There was one you had, I went, do you know what, that's really, really good. 25 quid. I went, not at that price, you can shove it up your ass, I'm afraid. Took the piss, 25 quid for a short fill is, and that's uh, so like I'm saying, that wasn't even, I don't think, with Nick Shots. On the hardware side of things, it was severely lacking. It really was. I mean, all right, everyone had a pod system. Which, yeah, it's fair enough, it, it, it's good for new stars. You don't get a lot of new starters at these events, which is the problem. That's okay for your B2B days, but when you get to B2C and you walk in and you see that moment, it's a bit, oh, another pod system. Hey, what does yours do that does that, that one and that one and that one and that one and that one doesn't do? Oh, it's the same, just looks in a different shape. I mean, oh, I've got to be fair, I mean, I've got this up for review. I've got it from the Element stand, the Gusto Mini from Aspire, which are teamed up with Elements. Um, they very kindly so they gave me five different wraps for it. It's a, it's a good little device, it does its job. I have been warned about a little thing inside here, which I will get to when I do the review on it. But they threw in about six boxes of pods for the review as well. So I've got three from the Zeus Juice pods. And I've got three of Element's own pods coming up as well. Uh, so um, it was good to speak to James again on Vape Base. They said they'd had a quiet one. Uh, it was good to speak to the guys from Super Good. Um, first time I've managed to actually try their juices, and, and that's why I've got the whole re whole range in here to review. They are something a little bit special. I've uh, got the rest of uh, the bacon vape range to review, because I did do the Million Shortcake, but I've now got the other three to do as well. Really nice people. And so it was good to finally meet up with um, Kent Phillips from um, Subhome Magazine. We had a nice little chat for quite a while, and Milo. So on the social side, it was okay. 
On an actual event side, it was Tosh. And Modder's Gallery, I don't know what the hell has happened to that. That's gone so down the toilet. It's unbelievable. I mean, getting there on the Saturday, one booth was already emptied. There's just nothing there. So I think there was about five. It, it, it started to look like that one time that Expo tried to do a Modder's Gallery and failed miserably. Uh, was good to meet up with Sean and Bessie from Golden Vapes. You know, the guys who make those really excellent drip tips. Nice to, find, nice to meet up with them again and have a chat. And they had a good expo. They, they, there wasn't, they wasn't a lot of their stock they were taking home with them. They did really get hammered on the sales front, which is good to see. Yeah, it was just a bit... Mm, CBD. Oh, I've got to say, the CBD is pissing me off now. Um, yeah, I know it does good i know vaping can be a delivery system but now every man and his fucking dog has got a cbd line of various qualities and actual expertise in it from what it seems and oh and when you go to a booth and then you you, you now start to see buds turning up i saw this a couple of expos back and now it, you get you're now getting shelves of buds it looks it makes us look like a fucking weed event we're not a weed event you can't vape a Bud! Oh, unless you've got the heat not burn bollocks, but oh, just, just not needed, it really weren't. So, yeah, if it hadn't been for the fact that I had people to talk to there, it would have been a very, very short event. Um, also, got to give a massive shout out to the Fox. Good God, you were dead on a vape event. Normally, that is the, that is, that is the, that's the more entertaining part of the day. Then the event is actually having one in the Fox with everyone around you, everyone chatting, everyone getting on, everyone showing what they've got and sharing stories and all that stuff. Yeah, there was seven people outside when I went there on a vape event. I mean, that kind of gives you an indication of how dead it was. Mind you, the Fox has put its prices up. I mean, a pipe, a pint of Pish Fosters was £5.50. I mean, I know in London, I know £5 a pint can round about be it. Five pound fifty for Fosters. Well, fuck off. Maybe that's why you were dead. <laughs> I mean, you had a load of fucking larpers inside, but yeah. Normally, you can't find a table in there on these days, and yeah, it was it was quiet. But yeah, I mean, I'll be fair. The main reason I went was because it's going to save me time at Expo this year because I'm only going for the I'm only going for one day, I'm going for the Saturday, and it will save me time in that aspect. But as an event, I think it's died on its arse. It's not quite London Vape Show levels, but it's died on its arse. It's just... As I say, when you're free, you're quite easy. Even, even like me, around the stage area. I mean, give-outs were stupid on the on the throw-out front. There, weren't, there was a crowd around there, but there wasn't anything massive. But I mean, I can't remember. I think it was strappled. Strapped? When they came out, they must have thrown out a good 300 to 400 build mats. I mean, they even like had good, like four or five in their hand. They're just handing them to people that were in the crowd. It was ridiculous the amount of <coughs> stuff that was flying out there for the people that, for the amount of people that were actually around the stage area. I've never seen a, a throw out like it. <laughs> it's been like, oh, here's 10. There you go. Oh, there's another 10. There's five. And oh, we're through these. Blah, 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 blah. People had them on their heads, they were landing on their shoulders, they were slapping people in the face. It was quite funny, <laughs> if I've got to be honest, it was quite funny. It's just seeing everyone just get slapped by build mats just because of the sheer volume that were getting thrown out. Have got to give a special mention to the Zebra crew. Um, saw them at the last October's uh, expo, and I've got to admit, they put on a good show. It's full gear, full African gear. Dancing, instruments, singing, getting the crowd involved. At one point, and my camera pissed me off because the battery ran out at the time, they were doing about a 400 people conga around Vape Jam. And it's, oh, well, that's the atmosphere you need. You need a little bit of fun. A little fun. I think that was the word that was missing from this, really. It was a bit sterile. I mean, there were bargains to be had there, but you did kind of have to hunt sometimes. Oh, I must also give special mention to um, Prohibition Vapes. Um, they're, they're, they've got their new line, um, Aura, I think it's called. But the whole booth was augmented reality. 
there was lots of areas on the booth and on the stand on the display where if you'd had the app on your phone and you pointed at certain things it basically the actual booth would come alive and give you a story about what's around this juice around and the, their idea for it that was really good i'd like to see more of that something that's a little bit different something that's a little bit a little bit adventurous to be fair on the advertising front and it did work really really well wasn't so bothered about the next ups to be fair the flavors were all right but there's like four different aniseed ones with a fruit and a tobacco one and a caramel one but it's just a bit yeah but everyone's doing it <laughs> it's not really a new range it might be a new range to you guys but it's not really a new range it's common uh, it's another reason why this is getting a review because something a little bit different <laughs> that's already out there i mean we used to have cocktail flavors for quite a while back but then they kind of seem to have died off and everyone would just went fruity 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 because it's a piece of piss to make and if you fuck that up you shouldn't be in the business but yeah a bit meh i think is probably the best term and i didn't have the best journey going into the event anyway so it didn't put me in a, an amazingly great mood to start off with Already had to get off at Norwich so we can get onto a coach to get to Ipswich to then get off the coach to get back onto a train to get to London. But then that train went and conked out to, to the four engines so then we got terminated. And then we had to go and get crammed onto this other one which then stopped at every single stop get to London. Yeah, how the hell I was only in the end about an hour and five minutes late, I don't know. And then getting to London to find out certain parts of the underground were being maintained or repaired on a bloody holiday system again. Yeah, in London you're starting to get a bit, uh, do I really need to go there because your travel system is shit getting there and it's shit while you're there. <laughs> so all in all, I'm probably about 50-50 on it. Um, for the social side of things and actually chatting to companies, yeah, it was good. You had plenty of time to chat to companies, to be fair, with the amount of people there. So that side was good. But the actual quality of the content that was there was shockingly bad. Like I said before, hardware was practically non-existent. Really was. You're probably not going to say a good 95% juice. I say not. No. I've got 97% juice, CBD, Nixons. That was probably about that. And 3% hardware if you're lucky and you search for it. But it was unusual. I mean, this is probably telling you how the event is now going down the toilet. Even Oikos couldn't be asked. So Vibe were there. I don't remember if I actually saw Blue there either, to be honest. Uh, but I say the only one booth I deliberately ignored and avoided, and that was the head candy one because I weren't in the mood for an argument. But yeah, the event is going down the toilet. But sitting there, how, how good. I mean, I enjoyed the first one. I loved the second one. The second one was superb. The third one was a fucking jumble sale because it was just before the TPD. Didn't bother with the fourth one. Heard it shrunk and it was it was quiet. And this is small but it's not, compared to expo everything is small but it didn't feel like there was a lot there and yeah just no atmosphere the atmosphere is severely gone like i say if it weren't for zebra there had been zero atmosphere at that event and that's a bit shit so yeah will it be back next year well they've got the signs up that it will be back next year and it will it is the um it is vape jam and the CBD show! So that's another reason for me not to fucking go, to be honest. To, it, give it its own event. The industry is big enough for CBD to have its own event. I mean, they, they, they did do that in, actually in March, I do believe, in uh, Birmingham, NEC. There was its own, I think it was the Hemp and CBD Expo. I'd like to see that just move out of expos i know there's a market for but just give it make its own little section so if that's what you're interested in and that's what you're going for just give it its own little section so you don't get everywhere you go and you go oh, what's this i'll save you that i'm not bothered sorry man oh what's it i'll save you that i'm not bothered um <laughs> it's getting a bit much anyway i've had a bit of a ramble there i'm gonna crack on with a review um yeah as i said today uh, my review will be part one from the super good range as i say today will be the pear fizz 
and the Blue Pom Mojito. I've got to say, for the record, any views or opinions you hear during this review are mine and mine alone. Um, I've not been paid to do this review. I did not pay for the product. The good people at Supergood were exceptionally generous and gave me the whole range in the 120s for review purposes. Uh, my weapon of choice today will be the Geek Fake Blade, and that has got the EHP, uh, the EH Pro. Oh, for fuck's sake. Try this again in English. The EH Pro Model M, and that is dual core to 0.24. Also, got to state individual taste setups, and of course, power levels will alter what you get from a juice. I can only personally tell you what I'm getting myself. Right, we'll crack on with the box, the labels, and the safety features, and then we'll crack on to the actual juice review. Box and labels. I love your design. I love it. I absolutely love the design. There is nothing on there that is going to piss off another company. Nothing that is nicked from another company. So you try to pass it off as that type of product. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five. We've got six languages on the back for the warning. We've got the do not sell to under 18s. Not advisable for pregnant women. Uh, made with love by Supergood, and we've got their web address. Plus, we've also got their physical address, should there be any problems and you need to get in contact with the company. This product does not contain nicotine. This product is not for food, only for use with e-cigarettes. Made with love by the... We are the, the, the uh, it tells you at the bottom that what you get in the packet is zero milligram. It's a hundred milliliters. Obviously, you add two nick shots to this, two 18 milligram nick shots to get a three milligram. Of course, you can add one, one 10 mil nick shot plus 10 mil of VG to get a 1.5. Or, of course, you can just add 20 mil of VG and get a zero. So, yeah, I'm more than happy with that. I, I, I'll be fair, I'm more than happy. I, I love, I actually love the design. The bottle, see bottle for batch and expiry details inside. Not sure whether that should be on the outside of the box, to be honest. There we go. Alright, then we open it up. So one thing I do look about this, it tells you exactly what flavours are in the bottle. It's not one of these arty farty ones that take you on a journey through a mystical wood to actually get what the flavour is. It tells you there what you should be getting. Alright, uh, we've got the caution on here, keep out the reach of children, wash hands, thoroughly after handling. This product does not have any label elements in accordance to regulation EC. Then we've got the batch number. And we've got the expiry date, which is December 2020. <clears throat> we've got the not for 18, it's not for pregnant on the bottle as well. One thing I have got a slow problem with is this one here. This product does not contain nicotine. Yes, it doesn't have point of sale, but it has the potential for nicotine to be put in it. I would kind of like to see that on the label. Because, I mean, if, if you've got that at home, someone else picks that up. And they go, oh, hang on, this product doesn't contain nicotine. Oh, that's fine. Now we can... All right, three milligrams isn't going to do you a lot of harm, to be honest. You just have to do a lot of it before your stomach starts to reject it. But I would kind of like to say that this product has the potential for nicotine to be added to it. <coughs> I know at point of sale it hasn't. But in the end, it's going to be 90 Five percent of the challenge, someone's going to be adding nicotine to this overall bottle. So when it's on there, then this product does contain nicotine, but it was the user who put it in. I would like to see this product potentially could have nicotine in it, but doesn't at point sale. Something like that. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, I say more than happy with that childproof list, as every short fill should be. Got your tampering round there. As I always state, if when you buy this product, the tampering is in any way damaged, broken, or missing, demand another product. It's there for your peace of mind. Um, one thing I will say, getting the, this off was an absolute ball like They are. I had to do, get the knife under, and I'd be fair to do five of them. Probably took me about twenty minutes to actually get these things off. I'll be fair. When you put them back on again, they are on for life. Um, you. you physically hear, feel that click as they go on and yeah they ain't moving for love nor money so they, they, they're great when you put them back on bit of an arse trying to get them off anyway I'm gonna crack on with the review now um, yeah all in all labels wise I'm happy with box wise I'm happy with just that it's just that little thing with the nicotine 
but technically they're right. At point of sale, there is none, but if you've got that on display in your house, then there's a high percentage chance there will be at that point. We'll give this a quick blow out. I'm going to start off with the pear fizz. Now, in this should be champagne, pear, and lime. Yeah, we're moist. All right, here we go. As always, I'm going to start for 3.7. Start at 56.5 watts. There we go. No throat hit, which was good. I think, if I remember rightly, this is a 70 30. Yes, it is. It's a 70 30. Mind you, the next shot might be like 72, 73, 27. It can be far off from what it says on the bottle, to be fair. Clay production is superb for a 7030, as you can see, I've now been evaporated. Flavour wise, the first thing you get is a really, really juicy pear. It's a very natural, juicy pear. But then just as you've you've acknowledged the fact there's pear there, the champagne mixes in also on the inhale. There's a slight ickle fizz. You just feel it on the tongue. Not anything excessive, not anything that's gonna make you gargle like a like a drunk at the end of it. Doesn't produce that much saliva, it's just enough to let you know it's there. The lime comes through on the exhale at the moment, but you've still got that, sha that pear champagne taste on the tongue, so it just mixes in nicely on the exhale. It is a full-bodied, full-rounded flavour. And that's not putting a lot of power through it at the moment either. It's just like having a really great cocktail. That is bloody gorgeous. Oh, I've got to go to four volts. which is 66.2 watts. Still got that pear. That pear is really long lasting. As it goes on, the champagne element does die down a little bit. The lime there is just a nice little twist at the end. But the actual pear, mmm, mmm. It's gonna, already, like me, I'm not generally a fan of the 120s. <coughs> Mainly because doing the reviews and stuff, and also I use a dripper. They normally last me a very long time. And they're a bit bulky to carry. So I would like to see this come out in maybe a 50. Or even a 30 to be honest. But I'll take 50. Just for just ease of carrying around. Wow. Going up that champagne element does kick up again. But then mixing, so you kind of got the apples from the champagne, and you also got the pear juice going in there as well. Really, really Moorish. It's very refreshing as well. That lime's kicked up a gear as well. It's coming in a little bit more at the end of the inhale now, but lasting all the way through the exhale, mixing in with the pear and the salt and the champagne. Did not fault that at all. I uh, say so I had the pleasure of having a, having a quick go on, on them at the actual event. I mean, at the event they were offering them for forty percent off. Take note, six licks. Sorry, I'm not going to keep coming back to you. All right, I will go up to four point two. Well, up to seventy three point one watts. Wow. The pe 
pear is now coming through the strongest. And it's the pear likes the power. Oh wow. And a little pear fizz at the end. Not so much getting the lime now. Champagne has been kicked more as an exhale. Oh wow, and the flavour just sits on the tongue. Yeah, in for 120, that ain't going to last me long. If you're a fan of cocktails, and definitely if you're a fan of pear, give that one a go. That's the pear fizz. Wow. In a sea of every company practically just copying each other because they run out of ideas on the flavour profiles, that is a refreshing change. Right, I'm going to have a quick blowout and I shall move on to the Blue Pom Mojito. I don't know why I have to say it like that. Every time that word comes up, I have to say Mojito. Come in a bar, Mojito. Yeah, we're empty. Oh my god, it looked like a bit of fog bound in the room now. I say, the, the, the vapor projectile. Basically, I would have thought this was an 80-20. It's a very smooth, very voluptuous vapour that comes from this. Right, now for our gourmet delights on this one, we should be getting blueberries, pomegranate, lime, mint and sugar. So let's see what we're like. We're going to go back down to 3.7. Going back down to 56.5 watts. Straight away. Oh! Got to mention, there's a lovely little aftertaste of this, but I'll come to that afterwards. Um, wow. Blueberries and pomegranate. You get blueberries first. Then you get this absolutely scrumptious pomegranate. And the exhale, you just get this little sprinkling of sugar. Not excessive, not overdone, not sweet until his arse falls out. This little sprinkling of sugar. And also with that, following that, once you can go, oh, that was, you get this mint. I don't mean menthol, <coughs> as you get with most of them. I mean, you get a little bit of mint. It tastes more like um, leaf mint, a mint leaf. And there's a little bit of lime dancing around with that as well. But each actual ingredient of this is easily distinguished. Wow. And then when your tongue touches anyway, you get the blueberry explosion in your mouth again. This is a very complex juice. Wow. It feels like a juice while well, I should be sitting in a smoking jacket while doing this. It feels a bit posh. But it tastes absolutely gorgeous. As I say, you can identify every individual flavour in this and at the different stages it hits. Obviously, going up the power, that's going to alter that. Some may come together, some may separate out a bit more, but at the moment... I'll be fair, it's right at the end of the tongue you get that little bit of sugar. I'll be fair, <coughs> I'll just be happy with the blueberry and the pomegranate. But that's a really good inhale. But then the little tricks and surprises you get at the end, with that little bit of sugar, the lime, and that little bit of authentic mint. Yeah, wow. Alright, I'm going to go up to 4 volts. I'll be fair, I could quite happily just stay at 3.7 there. That is really, really good. I'm going to have another quick squirt because I'm actually vaping this probably a little bit more than other juices I've done for review. Comes to something, I mean, I've got 600 mil of their product here and it's one of the few times I'm looking at it and going, <coughs> I don't think it's going to last long. Right, up to 66 watts. I 
Oh, good grief. That's so good. Um, what I've got to say, it's going up in power now. Oh. It's changed around. Um, basically, every item is coming together. And then you notice little spokes, a little bit of sugar there, a little bit of lime there, a little bit of pomegranate. It's a pure blueberry exhale now. It's definitely the dominant flavour that's lasting from the inhale and the exhale, but you're getting all the others kind of blended together at the start. Oh, wow. So this is only the second one of theirs, but I can already taste the love, time and attention that has been put into this bottle to make this juice. It's incredibly succulent in its flavour. And long lasting, but not to the point of being overpowered. It's not because it's blasted you out and you just can't get rid of the flavour. It's just, you breathe out and you get it again. I say, everywhere your tongue touches, that blueberry explosion goes off again. Wow. Mmm. Wow. Right, I'm going to go up to 4.2. No, I'm going to zoom straight past it like normal. There we are. Back up to 72.9 watts. To be fair, both of those power levels so far I'm more than happy with. They're juices you can play around with as well due to the many elements that are in these products because we all know some flavors react better at lower temperatures some react better at higher temperatures or higher power levels but i've got a, i've got a nice little mouth water going on at the moment here we go 72.9 watts wow Going up, the flavour order flips on its head. Um, you're getting that mint leaf to start off with, with a little bit of sugar and the lime. The predominant flavour now on the exhale is the pomegranate. It has mixed with the blueberry, but you do detect you're getting more pomegranate than blueberry on the exhale. But yeah, it's one you can play around with, which is always good. There's something for everyone in the juice, and you can play around with it to find your happy zone. No, another one I cannot fault at all. Um, super good by name, super good by nature. I um, cannot fault these so far whatsoever. Uh, if you're a fan of cocktails, especially blueberry and pomegranate, give that one a go. That was absolutely yummy. Right, well, that brings me to the end of part one. If you have enjoyed what you've watched today, please remember to like, share, comment, and, of course, subscribe to the channel. Um, my ugly mug should be appearing here at some point. Give it a slap and give us a sub. So, on behalf of myself, Darren Stone, head of the Department of Inhaled Vapors, I bid you all a very good day, and we'll be back soon with part two. In part two, I shall be looking at runting, strawberry daiquiri, and last but not least, the porn star martini. So, see you soon, people.